Um, the way to be in the world is to orient yourself to the highest mm. possible good you can conceive because you don't have anything better to do. You also say that uh, you encourage people to take on as much responsibility as they can and because this constitutes a meaningful life and this is, I find this quite interesting, you know what is meaningful because it is encoded into your body, the notion of, me of meaningfulness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the deepest, it's the deepest of the higher instincts, yeah. that's a good way of thinking yeah. about it. My, my, my reading of this was that, now it's actually your reading, but um, what constitutes meaning is the right balance between chaos and order. And this is actually what you described as paradise on earth, being mm -hmm. a walled garden where both where chaos, the chaotic potential, and the logos mediate supreme beauty. Mm -hmm. and harmony. Harmony. Harmony, yeah. harmony is a good yeah. way of thinking about harmony. it. Because, well, people understand harmony because they listen to music. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, you listen to a piece of music you love, it's like, that's harmony. It's yeah. like, well, how would you like things to be like that? It's like, there's not a question. The fact that you love the piece of music means that you want things to be that way. It's direct. It's not mediated by yeah. cognition. Yeah. No, and it's so, something else. Huh? Mm -hmm, it is something else. It's absolutely something else. When I first heard you say this, this sentence, orient yourself to the highest possible mm -hmm. good you can conceive. I'd never thought of it that way. But when you just lay it out, it sounds really quite logical to uh, mm. sounds like the most logical thing to do yes but I, I never heard it in a, in an articulated fashion like that yeah I, I think that many people I think it was the the, the closure, closing remarks of maps of meaning uh, I think you refer to to Pinocchio mm -hmm. uh, when Geppetto, Geppetto he wishes for sure. the star exactly. which is the highest and idea for something impossible yeah right but can you elaborate on this why why, why does why does the highest possible good con constitute meaning and why do we feel this why do we feel when we're doing something meaningful? Well, I think it's because we go back to the beginning of the conversation is that we have a problem, right? We have the fall. That's the right way of thinking about it. We have chaos and tyranny and we have evil. It's like, what do you do about that? You, you pursue the pathway that solves those problems. That's what the meaningful pathway does. And that's why it feels meaningful. It's like yeah. those actually are the problems. Yeah. In, in a, in a, see, I, I've started to think, well, there, I thought for a long time, there are truths of drama <coughs> and literature. And there are material truths <coughs> of science. But there are times when those two align. And they're, they're, they're true literally and metaphysically. Literally and metaphorically at the same time. Yeah. And the idea that being is a place of tragedy and evil is literally and metaphysically true and, yeah. and metaphorically true both at the same time and the idea that there's a way of dealing with those both at the same time and that that's meaningful that's also literally and metaphorically true at the same time yeah. and the reason for that is that because it's true that our eternal enemies are tragedy and malevolence We've adapted to them, and we can feel, so to speak, when we're contending them with them properly. Yeah. And that feeling of contending with them properly is the feeling of meaning. Yeah. And, 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 so, and, so, and so there you have it. And the meaning that's, that's produced as a consequence of contending with those properly is the antidote to them at the same time. So, you know, in the, in the Christian story, of course, Christ voluntarily hoists his cross. Okay, so that means a lot of things at the same time. I mean, first of all, it's actually a heavy physical object. Second, it's, it is something you have to hoist up into your shoulders. It's a genuine burden. So it's a genuine physical burden. But it's also a metaphysical burden because at the same time that he hoists up his cross, he's accepting the burden of his death. And he's doing that, not only death, but suffering in death. And he's doing that voluntarily. It's like, that's the ticket, exactly that, is to do that voluntarily. It's like, yeah. It, there's no doubt, there's, life is tragic and bounded by malevolence, no doubt about it. Accept it, accept it, accept it, transcend it, and, and then things, then you transmute it. That's, the, that's, that's what, I've, I've never recovered from that realization 30 years ago. That, Which is a good thing. Right, right that's a good thing. That, that, but, but you know, I'm, I would say in many ways I'm a deeply pessimistic person okay. because I'm, I'm very aware of the finitude of life and the suffering that's associated with it, acutely aware of that, and also of malevolence. And then I came across this set of ideas, which I've been elaborating, that we've been talking about, and there's this process that's laid out as an antidote. It's like, tell the truth, 
Orient yourself towards the highest good you can conceive of and tell the truth and that will work. And the strange thing is, it works. It's like, really? It works? Those are big problems. You might think they're so big that they have no solution. How could they have a solution? It's like, well, they have a solution. Isn't that something?